Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Wow, today's going to be a good show. We're going to talk about Flat Earth and we're going to talk about one man's journey into spirituality and then Flat Earth. It's been a very big year for him. Well, we're going to get into it now. It's Robbie D. And uh, he's got a channel called Celebrate Truth. So we're going to talk about Christianity. We're going to talk about how to raise children in this world where everything is a lie. And um, all things Flat Earth, of course. So, uh, so Robbie, hi. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Patricia. Appreciate being here. So uh, Celebrate Truth, your channel, how long have you been doing it? Uh, just over three months now. Yeah, it just mm -hmm. started uh, Yeah, about three months ago. And you're in Edmonton, uh, uh, Canada, and uh, you're outside of Calgary, just north or something like that? Yeah, north, about three hours north from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Yeah. And correct. behind you, you've got yourself a flat earth map there. I see Orlando yeah. Ferguson one. That's right, from the 1800s. And uh, when I first came to Flat Earth, I was just like, uh, I got to get something to present. So it's a conversational piece. If we have company over, I uh, talked to my wife about it. I'll get into that uh, later on. Um, but yeah, she was all for it. So we threw it right up on the wall. So your wife is Flat Earth as well? Well, absolutely. Yeah, it was actually kind of an interesting story. I mean, 2015 has been a big year for me. Um, I got married, uh, had a baby girl about two months ago um, and came to Flat Earth. So it's just been an extraordinary year. Um, but a little bit going into the past about uh, how I met my wife. Um, you know, we started talking online and, you know, everything kind of sat together and our first uh, date, we sat down and we were talking and I forget how it came up, but she was like, uh, said something and i'm like you don't believe they landed on the moon and she's like no and i'm like marry me oh. it was pretty much it was pretty much what i said <laughs> in my head and i was like wow because again i've always been like a you know a truther i've, I've been i've always you know been seeking truth uh been called a conspiracy theorist but for me the biggest thing you know when i was talking about whether it's jfk or 9 11 the moon landing always seemed to be the most outrageous one so finding someone that was parallel with that belief, um, you know, was extraordinary. And for the longest time, people said, listen, you know, you're not going to find a good godly woman that's also a conspiracy theorist. Give it up. You know, like there's just, it's not going to happen. But, you know, I obviously uh, kept uh, praying for that and saying that, no, I, I definitely, you know, need my life partners to uh, not think I'm crazy. So yeah. we had to be in sync with that. So that's kind of, uh, you know, how that happens. So I always say, you know, there's a, uh, uh, love at first sight, but for us, it was like love it. They didn't land on the moon. That's wonderful. You look at the moon, and it's more romantic than most people think it is for you guys. Yeah, uh, I'm on the same uh, wavelength as you. I I'm single and cannot uh, imagine being with anybody that doesn't have the what let's call them conspiracy beliefs that we share. It would be impossible to have somebody continually think you're crazy. It's such a huge part of your life once you discover it, and even if it's just. Uh, the moon landing and or and then into 9-11 and uh, hoax events and then of course the uh, religious beliefs mm -hmm. and a way of life that you you your beliefs uh coming uh together when it comes to how you want to raise your child and then on top of that the the flat earth wow you're asking for a lot but for you you prayed for that and you just wouldn't settle for anything less and she nope. appeared and there on the first date brought it up wow Wonderful. Yeah, and again, I wasn't even planning on uh, bringing that up, but when all of a sudden that that topic got, uh, got brought up, and all of a sudden I'm like, and I actually was trying to test her. I'm like, what? You don't believe they landed on the moon? She's like, no. And I'm like, okay, because I mean, it's one thing when you put someone on the defensive, when you say it like that on the first date, they'll be like, well, maybe you know they'll hesitate a bit. But nope, she was right confident on it. So she's actually from uh, New Zealand. So she's a Kiwi. I I got to marry a Kiwi from New Zealand. So uh, all her family is in New Zealand, and uh, apparently they had watched a documentary at some point. Her and uh, she comes from a family of uh, seven, um, and they had watched some sort of documentary. So a lot of people in her family, like they definitely. Do not believe they landed on the moon so that was kind of the most outrageous conspiracy theory you know whether it was in the circle of friends or you know at work um and that was the thing but when i came you know to flat earth it's very interesting because again i was a big believer in like you know kent hoven and ken ham like lots of creation ministries because again they were taking like the scientism or the religion, the belief of, of science, um, and showing that actually there were a lot of problems with it. Because again, you know, most of my life, you know, growing up, I definitely got into that area and, you know, started questioning 
um, the Bible and, you know, oh, this is just nonsense. I mean, of course they couldn't, you know, build an ark like this or they couldn't do this. And when these got, you know, presented, it just really, you know, confirmed a lot of, uh, I guess, my doubts or my skepticism, um, you know, with the Bible and that type of thing. So it was uh, extraordinary. But when I actually, you know, started researching, I actually, um, you know, was looking into, you know, verses in the Bible and there were just certain verses that were this just doesn't make sense. Like there's something missing here. There's something going on. Um, so I remember one night I was showing my uh, wife, I'm just like, check this out. And it was like, actually it was a, it was a video uh, making fun of flat earth. And it was just saying like, look at this, look what the Bible says, ha ha ha. Right. But I'm like, but that's what the Bible says. That makes sense. So again, I came, uh, I think it was a couple days later, I came across, uh, you know, Mark Sargent's flat earth clues. And that's it right there at that point, you know, just, getting into the psychology behind it and getting into just the missing pieces and how they link together, you know, as anyone that when they go flat, they can't go back kind of thing. It's just like, you're right into it. So I went along, I researched, I don't think I slept for, you know, a week. <laughs> you just, you go on this binge. You're just like, you're so incredibly blown away by how big this is. Everybody has said that same thing that they didn't sleep. They could barely eat. They would, wouldn't leave their house. It was always on their mind. Yeah, it does take over. And the once you go flat, you don't go back thing uh, seems to be true. Although somebody did message me the other day and said that they went back to the uh, spherical model because they couldn't prove something about sunlight. And I said, but does that mean you believe in the moon landing? And then he wrote back, well, it's still up for debate. And I was thinking, this person doesn't even, they haven't even explored flat earth at all. They're yeah. just toying with me. And it turned out in the end, this person just started trolling me. So they were just uh, having fun, I guess. And uh, in the end, it still is true that once you go flat, you don't go back. I thought I found one exception, but no, he was. He yeah, was I naked. mean, once you go flat, you never go back. And that's, I mean, it's definitely, you know, diving into the Bible. Um, you just can't go back. I mean, it is just so clear. I mean, from everything from the sun to the moon to the stars, every single thing, when you start looking into it and, you know, as a Christian or someone that believes that the Bible is the, you know, the final authority is the word of God, you're looking at these verses and you're just like, no, it was there all along. And it really starts to make sense when you understand that you know the bible says that satan is the god of this world right and if you look at like you know the illuminati or you look into the bloodline families like the rothschilds the rockefellers and you understand that they're very luciferian i mean 33 degree masonry i mean it's right luciferian right in your face i mean so you understand kind of where they're coming at and you understand that they have that agenda because one of the biggest questions is like, well, why, why in the world would they lie about this? It just seems so silly. And I mean, people have brought all sorts of different theories up. Um, and again, I think they can all be right. But really, it's like, is Flat Earth the end game or is it a means to an end? And I personally, in my documentaries and in a lot of the research that I've done, I see it as something that needs to be in place in order for the future lie that's going to come that's going to deceive mankind. Okay, so do you believe that is something involving, um, I, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Antichrist figure coming or a fake I, second coming of Jesus? I, I do. I believe that I, I've always, even before Flat Earth, I've always believed that basically the, the great deception that will come into this world that literally says that it, uh, even for the elect, even if that were possible, would deceive everyone. And it's almost like science is becoming the one world religion. You know, again, it's masqueraded as fact. You know, this is not debatable. This is science. But again, it's a belief system. And again, I think it it falls into the evolutionary chain when you understand of where, you know, from dinosaurs to caveman to all of the lies from everything from like global warming to the alien agenda to transhumanism, merging, you know, humans with technology. I think it all falls into place when you understand the hierarchy. But in order for that to happen, you basically have to completely take care of a creator, just get rid of them. You know, we're on our own, but also, you know, if there's going to be answers, they're going to come from some other evolved, you know, life form that are way more evolved than us and some other galaxy, you know, and even as a Christian for years, I always believed that, uh, you know, the alien agenda was more interdimensional than extraterrestrial. You know, it just didn't make sense, you know, like traveling, you know, 10,000 light years, you know, to get here to mess around and then take off again. You know, it just, it didn't right. make sense. 
especially if they were able to travel that far and oh darn their ship crashed when it came near earth <laughs> it's like very faulty around earth but everywhere else flew perfectly yeah yeah makes exactly sense. and that, and that's the thing it's just basically you know getting people programmed for that and if you look at kind of the beginning of the alien agenda it started off you know they're coming to attack us and but if you actually notice the transition in the last 10 years they're always kind of the helpers of mankind you know we're so dumb we're going to blow up the planet you know so they're going to come with the answers they're going to come with everything and that's what's extraordinary about flat earth everyone that's waking up to the fact that there is no space you know as we know it um when all of a sudden there is contact or there is an appearance um you know we really won't fall for it but i think the rest of the world would easily fall for it and i think that the deception of like the christ i think will be so um incredible that he will come and he will actually probably in a way take down the new world order like he will have the appearance of going i'm taking down evil and we're like wow you must be good you just took down an evil system so i think it's very very crafty in the sense that um it just won't be someone appearing i think that you know as we're looking into the illuminati and the one world order and all that i think in a way it will be an interesting um you know controversy when it comes to taking down the new world order and then claiming to be christ and this is the interesting thing christians are waiting for jesus muslims are waiting for jesus i mean in islam it literally says that you know they're waiting for jesus christ to come um you get into the jews they don't believe jesus with messiah so they're waiting for the messiah so if you get into every major world religion around the world they're all waiting so i think it will be so crafty that even you know the church or you know the majority of people that are going to church whether it's christian church will be like wow like this is the messiah he's come he's given us the answers they've given us the answers and they will have the answers even christian flat earthers could be fooled because supposedly this person could be doing so much good that it will appear like well wait a minute let's let's step back and maybe this is Wow, it's going to tear apart even a flat earth Christian community, I would imagine. Yeah, it actually says that if if it wasn't for God, you know, doing something supernatural, even the elect, the ones that have been chosen by God, would be deceived. It is that grand of an illusion. And it says God will send a delusion into the world. So something's coming in, we'll have that miraculous, uh, you know, and again, it will come in all signs and wonders, it says. So, yeah, I think that when we're watching anything from like Marvel or superheroes or even Star Wars, I mean, all these things are lining us up, you know, for the idea. Because, I, you know, most people when they're watching, say, Star Wars, I actually watched it last night, which is mm -hmm. very interesting. Um, but again, when they look at it, they're like, yeah, this is science fiction. But maybe in a thousand years, maybe in you know ten thousand years, we'll be able to do this, right? But that whole illusion is you know put in place. And again, if you you know research it and study it, again, it's just one massive lie. I mean, space as we know it does not exist. And they have done it with things like Star Trek, the original series. They had the communicators that ended up we had flip phones mm -hmm. that looked the same way in the I guess 90s or so mm -hmm. so they have those sort of things so that you say oh yeah well in the 60s they you know they said that we'd have these it's in the future we'll have that stuff they're, they're telling us and then sometimes we do so uh, what do you think is going to happen I mean do you have any things you talk about with your wife like I think there will be a being that they say comes from another planet who says I've really created you that I'm here now and I'm going to do away with the new world order who comes down and then everybody can see who this person is it would never be able to happen on a ball because nobody could come down from the heavens and be seen all over the ball but on the flat plane it, this could happen is this person is it going to be a person or a being or I know this is pure speculation but what do you think yeah, actually, I mean, I definitely, you know, the Bible is very clear. It does say that a man will arise and will unite the entire world as one. Um, and if you look at all the the spirituality and you look at the bloodline families and you look at their agenda, they are definitely really infatuated with bringing the world together as a global community the global elite and again it takes the globalist to a whole new level when you start you know using these terms but again they definitely have an agenda uh, of unifying man you know against god and I, I think and i've always looked at this um as very very plausible that they won't only come and you know show and give us help and give us the answers and maybe even like in signs and wonders cure diseases you know like i mean how can these beings or people be bad when they're doing such wonderful things for humanity but i think that they're going to be like but 
there is an alien force out there in the universe that's very hostile, kind of like the Borg. They want to assimilate everything. And we are going to prepare mankind. We are going to get you ready because don't worry. We're not going to like leave you. We're not going to forsake you. We are going to stay with you, prepare you for the coming invasion that's coming. And when they banned, because I mean, reading the Bible, there were some interesting verses where it like literally says in the battle of Armageddon, they're battling and they're doing all these things. And then they see God coming in the clouds and they turn and make war with him. And you're thinking, I can understand people not believing in God or not wanting God, but to actually make war with God in the clouds as he's coming down. To me, it may, it's very, very understandable. And for most people, if you look at it as a hostile alien invasion, yeah, of course. And I mean, Reagan said it uh, as well. He said, like, look, if you want to join humanity together as one, instantly, you just need a coming force. And instantly, we would all erase all of our races, you know, all of our beliefs. We would all join together as humans against this force. So I think it's a very, very smart play. And if you look at all the... Um, you know, global agendas like global warming. People are like, well, you know, is it real? Is it not? But if you understand that they want to carbon tax every person on the entire earth, this is, they're looking at certain things where they can unify and find out ways of basically collectively bringing everyone together on these issues, you know? And if you're not for this, well, you know, you're with the terrorists or you're crazy or, you know, we've got to prevent these people from speaking up. So over time, there's going to be more and more hate, whether you're a climate change denier um or you know a sphere ball flying through space <laughs> Den denier yeah exactly have you faced a lot of criticism in your life ever since you went flat i we all do but you're more of a yeah. public person person yeah, I would say, uh, you know, absolutely. I, I've had, uh, you know, some conversations with some friends that, uh, you know, definitely think it's just crazy. But in having discussions, one in particular, I think it lasted about three hours. We had a three hour debate. And here's the interesting thing with Flat Earth. When you get into Flat Earth, you actually know more about the global, you know, you know, spherical Earth than people that are even clinging to that theory, you know. So I think, you know, it's almost like people with the Bible and they're like, well, you know, I don't really believe in the Bible. Well, have you read it cover to cover? Well, no. Well, why don't you read it before you say don't believe in it? And then if you believe in it, people say, well, you know, there's an error in the Bible. You hear all these things and it's like, well, what error is the most concerning to you? Well, I really don't. So it's kind of that utterance, right? It's like that cognitive dissonance, same thing with the spinning ball flying through space. It's like, well, but it is, you know, we've seen pictures, we've seen this. Again, when they get down to it, they really have no clue. They, they have no, you know, other than, well, I see this ship, you know, on the horizon. But other than that, when you're getting into like, you know, the circumference or you're getting into curvature rates or you're getting, so I find that with most people, they almost back down um, because you know so much, you you must be educated because you're talking a lot of stuff that they just don't know. So whether they're going to go look, and again, some people actually have because they're like, I'm going to go out, I'm going to prove you wrong. Um, but again, I would say that a lot of people in my life, including my wife, when I brought this up to my wife, it took her two seconds, literally two seconds. She's like, yeah, as the Bible says it, then yeah, it's true. It was just like there was no there was no cognitive dissonance. It was it was you know remarkable. So then I don't know for most people when you come to this and you're just like I don't know you're just like exploding. You've got to tell someone. There's just something in you. You're just like I got to tell someone. Like someone's got to hear this. This is so huge. So um, one of my uh, really good friends, Kevin. I'm just like he had a flat tire and he asked you know can you uh, can you help me uh, with my flat tire? So I went out there and I was driving him to fix the spare. And all of a sudden I'm like, dude, do you want me to rock your world? He's like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, what if I told you everything's been a lie? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, what if I told you that space doesn't exist? So I proceeded in the conversation and I started bringing up the Bible and literally you could just see him. He's just thinking. And all of a sudden he's like, whoa. And all of a sudden the week afterwards, literally we were like texting three, four, five in the morning. Just, you know, he was right messed up for like a week, you know, like, Oh my goodness, you know, because he's a real big space junkie and so was I, you know, with Star Wars or just the entire thing with the heliocentric model. So when you come to that realization, you're just like, wow, this is so huge. And it was just like you're flooded with just all of these thoughts, especially everything that you've kind of gone through, everything you've learned. You're like, yeah, but, but what about the sun? What about eclipses? What about the earth? You know, you're just like over and over and over. You're going through all of these things that just kind of, you know, mesmerized you through through life.
Yeah, bubbling with ideas. I tried telling my brother when I first found out because we're relatively close. It didn't really work that well. He was able to view some of the material that I sent him with an open mind, asked me a few questions. But one of the first things he asked me was, so have you become a quote, crazy Christian now? So to him, flat earth equals crazy Christian. So I realized he hadn't looked into it that much yet. And he never really, he looked at some, he never asked for more information. And there are people who do that. You give them all the information, they come back with some kind of an objection of some sort, and then they just don't, they go about their life. They don't feel that, that thing that you felt and I felt and others, your friend felt, uh, that just makes you compelled. You cannot stop yourself. You're up 24 hours looking at flat earth material and asking yourself, wandering around in a daze, just thinking, you know, barely able to drive your car because you're thinking, Looking oh, at the yeah. sun, and it's closer than I thought. And you're just, you know, you're you're out of your mind. But you're not. You're actually, for the very first time in your life, not out of your mind. I know. So I'm, that's, I'm sad that's, about my brother, but maybe one day he'll look at it again and have a second thought. Who knows? And I see it as like there's three ways to approach people. You need to look at a person, and a are they spiritual? B um, are they uh, into the scientific? The, like the science of it all, you know, or are they conspiracy theorists? If they're a conspiracy theorist, you just have to assess, do they believe in the moon landing? I find that the moon landing opens up. I mean, I've had discussions, my wife and I, we've met with people and we've talked to six or seven or maybe eight now people at our church. I've had three meetings now with my pastor sitting down talking and, you know, just little cracks, you know, but again, it's such a huge thing. I mean, I think Mark Sargent said it best sometimes is like one of the first rules is don't mention flat earth, you know, like flat earth club kind of thing. Saying flat earth, I think just scares people, you know, and again, it was two years. I used to laugh at it. I used to just see something or hear about someone believing the earth was flat. And I'm like, what a bunch of morons, you know, like seriously, they need just to, you know, look at pictures or whatever. So I was there, so I can sympathize. I can empathize with people. Um, you know, when I get these comments on uh, my videos or whatever, it's like at one point I was there. So I don't, I look at it like it's a process and it takes a while for most people. Um, but again, it's like if they're a conspiracy theorist, oh, you know, I'm kind of skeptical on JFK. Okay. What about 9-11? You know, some people might be really skeptical on the JFK or they might, you know, say, well, there's more and it's, there's more to the, the story. But when it gets to 9-11, they're like, well, no, I believe in the official story. Well, I don't think they're ready for flat earth in the sense of just hitting with them. Um, but again, if they're like, yeah, I don't think they'll head on the moon. Okay. Now let's go because it's like, well, what was the reason? What was the mm -hmm. reason to lie? Was it the Cold War? Was it ending the Cold War with uh, Russia? Was it, you know, all of these different things. But when you get into, and that's, I used to always say that I'd have my 10 reasons why they didn't land on the moon, you know, whether it was wind and whether it was the Cold War, or whether, you know, the biggest thing I've said to so many people is I'm like, they've never been back. Well, they don't need to because they've already been there. And I'm like, really? all the sophisticated technology and you can't mine more stuff on the moon and learn more things. And you're really going to say, well, they don't need to, they've already been there, but there's so many people that believe that. Oh, um, yes. But again, if they actually are skeptical about the moon uh, and again, I go back to those three points. If you're talking to someone that's very, very spiritual or believes in the Bible, you can just go with that. And again, they'll, if they're a person that wants to seek the truth, they want to be a Bible literalist and saying, I want to take this literal, which was intended for the most part to be taking literal, um, you know, you can open them up to it. Or if they're into the science, great. I mean, there's just wonderful people doing all sorts of, you know, the, the sci scientific uh, method and doing experiments that are observable and repeatable. Um, so that's the nice thing about this. And again, it's like you were saying before, it's not just Christians that believe in flat earth, which is very encouraging encouraging um, to see uh, so many people from all walks, all face, you know, um, people all around the world that are that are actually doing this. And again, even opening the Bible for the first time. I mean, it's very encouraging for someone, you know, uh, believing the way I do to see, you know, there is no other conspiracy ever. I did a video on it called Thank God It's Flat. And I mentioned the fact that you get to JFK, 9-11, Boston bombing, Paris, you get into any of these conspiracies nobody's looking into it and going, I'm going to look in the Bible, but with flat earth, 
I want to see what the Bible has to say. I want to see what the you know Book of Enoch has to say. So I've never seen a conspiracy. And again, I'll use that word because again, a lot of people at first kind of look at it like, oh, there's you know there's a conspiracy, you know, trying to hide this. Um, but I've never ever seen in all my research, and I've like researched everything from 9/11 to Boston bombing to like every single one you can think of, uh, climate change. But there's never been a conspiracy for the truth community that people in droves have started opening the Bible and going, whoa, you know, like, wow. you know. So it, it's it's encouraging for me, for sure. If it's a conspiracy at all, it's a conspiracy to get people uh, to read Bible. So it's got to be like the Gideon people. They're at the root of all this. <laughs> They're trying yeah. to sell more Bibles. Yeah, what Bible sure. do you particularly, I know you mentioned Book of Enoch. What Bible do you particularly like? Yourself. Uh, King James, for sure. I'm a, a big, uh, you know, as far as uh, looking at it. I mean, I look at other translations as well. I'm not a King James only uh, Christian, but I definitely believe it's uh, the best. I would say that for sure. I bought a King James Bible, never owned a Bible in my life, and the Book of Enoch, and mm -hmm. some, something else as well, which I haven't got to. Now, am I reading this daily? No, I have so much to do, and it's a huge excuse, and I, mm -hmm. I read a little, then I go back to it. Um, so I've got a lot of catching up to do, but uh, having you on the show is quite helpful, uh, Ravi. Um, uh, what about Ken Hoven? You mentioned him earlier, and he's a Bible literalist. literalist. You mentioned that earlier, but then he you can't he's a, he's a nut that you can't crack. I don't mean he's nutty and crazy. I mean, you can't uh, you can't break through the hard shell that he's got when it comes to the flat earth. Uh, is there any hope, or do you think that somebody behind the scenes is making sure that he doesn't talk about it? No, I don't think there's a major conspiracy or he's been told, you know, not to talk about this. I think just for some people that have set up their entire ministry, um, you know, and he's done a profound job at exposing evolution. I mean, uh, he had actually about 15, 16 years ago came to my church um, and I got to meet him and just a wonderful, like really genuine man. Um, and I mean, a lot of the stuff that he does, he's doing genuinely. He wants to spread the gospel, but he also wants to, you know, show the reality of real science is proving their theories wrong. And I think for a lot of people that were really looking into the hard facts, not just like, well, I'm going to believe in, you know, Noah's Ark because the Bible says it. It's like, well, no, let's go into the dimensions. Let's let's actually build that to scale. Let's see how big that was. Let's see feasibly, you know, it says uh, two of each kind, only animals that breathe through their nostrils. I mean, stuff like this is explained. And then you start compiling it because I was a big skeptic. I started looking, I had heard these things, you know, well, it's impossible. You can't put all the animals on an ark. That's silly right but i mean even with the worldwide flood what's fascinating um you know with the the flood accounts is all throughout the world um i would say there's tons of people uh you know all different cultures uh, talk about the flood account what's really fascinating is not the book of enoch but the book of jasher expands on nimrod and i think why nimrod is very very uh, important is because when we get into the antarctica you know um expeditions the first one was operation nimrod and then it was, you know, Operation High Jump and then Operation Fishbowl. And we, you know, we can kind of, you know, talk about that. But again, Nimrod, if you understand in the Bible, he was just a very evil man. But it says he wanted to build a tower to the heavens. But what Jasher explains is he had, he had basically knew all the stories of when the flood happened, there were literal windows that opened up where water came down. It wasn't just rain that came down. It says that the windows of heaven opened up and water came down and the fountains of the deep broke open. So when the flood happened, you've got water coming down, you've got water coming up. Um, so it's interesting in the book of Jasher, it explains that he was looking to actually find that doorway or that window to get in and actually kill God. So it's just, it's intriguing because for a long time, looking at even the tower of Babel, it just, there was something that just didn't make sense to me. I'm kind of like, well, if God is like trillions and trillions of light years away or outside of space and time and all this, and you know, very well could be. But why would that even be a threat? Why would that even be a concern? Why wouldn't you let, you know, sinful man just kind of tool around with their little tower? But it's very interesting. In the Bible, it says, whatever they have now imagined, they will achieve. And it's interesting. God, he doesn't send lightning bolts down, you know, and destroy people. He literally just changes their languages. 
so they can't understand each other and they all disperse you know in all places of the earth so to me it was always a very very fascinating part of the bible i'm like what exactly were they doing with the tower of babel with this tower they were trying to build to reach up to heaven um so to me it was very very fascinating but one by one all of these verses and i mean ken hoven going back to ken hoven you know explaining all these things it's almost like you know he's not alone i would say uh, the majority you know in churches you know including my church you know thankfully there's actually people that are looking Looking into this and going wow you know i'm looking into it there's something here you know but again the majority i don't think that they're choosing just not to believe it i just think that they caught on to the evolutionary lie but the big bang well who created the big bang god did and that was it it was a very easy way just to because science would say well there was nothing and it banged and created everything which was crazy you know how is that science you know nothing becomes something and explodes and creates everything but the christian community or the church basically just attached god to the bang they said ha ha right we got you god created the bang so i think it was just a very easy way for people to say nope god created the bang we don't need to worry about that let's just worry about this big monster lie that we came from monkeys you know like it's just it's absurd and then from the discoveries from the piltdown man or you're getting into all of these discoveries one by one they're considered hoaxes they're you know discovered as hoaxes so ken oven would actually literally in a presentation he's got wonderful material that he literally in a humorous way just one by one by one will go through like almost every point of the evolutionary um you know science you know presentation and just destroy it literally using science so i think for the most part they've just kind of forgot all of this leading up to evolution they've kind of worked their way from evolution on but when i'm talking to people i'm like but there is no evolution without the big bang right and it gets people thinking because they're like well how do we get evolution i mean how do we get you know raining on rocks for millions of years or even our heliocentric model without the big bang so the investigation should be the big bang you know getting into copernicus and getting into all you know way back but then you get into nasa and you get into why the majority of people believe and see with their eyes hey i see that spinning ball or i see that blue marble but when you start kind of seeing the absurdities of the actual pictures then you can start breaking it down pretty quick and it doesn't make sense for god to create the most prized you know creation um the exact same as everything out in the sky like a lot of people will say well the moon and the sun and everything in the sky is round or a sphere so we must be a sphere and i'm like it just you know it doesn't make sense it doesn't compute you know and for a long time whether it was like you know john calvin or augustine or you're getting into martin luther they were all fighting copernicus or i wouldn't say they were flat earthers in in the research i've done but what they were were geocentric they were we are stationary everything moves but we don't so again whether they came out with that or maybe they believe that they didn't actually put it that far in the writings but I think now, and I don't know why 2015 is the year of flat earth, but it's extraordinary how huge this is getting and how far it's stretching, you know, across the world uh, in every, you know, belief system. And the amount of, you know, atheists that are becoming agnostics overnight is, is tremendous because I think it's pretty hard if you, if, you know, once you go flat, you never go back. How can you be an atheist and believe in flat earth? So, yeah. you know, it's extraordinary. And again, that's one, you know, one piece of it all. But again, realizing that we were created unique, special, you know, we're not just some random accident, you know, of some, some explosion. And again, there's probably, you know, trillions of other lives, you know, lives out in the universe. And there's probably, you know, billions of ones that are way more evolved than us. And it makes sense to most people that are looking into this as, they came at one point, injected the DNA into a monkey or whatever, but they will come with the answers. And I think science is leading up, NASA, all these agencies are leading up for the grand lie that will come. But it has to be a pretty major lie to fool the whole world. Especially with all of us waking up. So do you think that this 2015 awakening has been somehow pushed by somebody or God at all to make us be able to withstand that lie and and go forward well yeah i definitely i definitely think so and people will say well why why haven't people been i mean flat earth has always been around it's just been kind of you know small and in numbers and it's exploding right now but again it's like you know is there a plan is it part of the plan i absolutely believe so 
because we're probably getting closer to that unveiling or that monster lie that's going to deceive the whole world. So, yeah, I do believe that, you know, it's not just by accident this is happening. And then people will say, well, how come, you know, this didn't come, you know, 50 years ago or 30 years ago? Because I honestly, I don't want to sound trite in the sense that it's not important. But again, as far as God's concerned, as far as salvational and what was important, God's saying, I desire a relationship. You know, religion gets a bad name. And again, there's atrocities that have happened throughout the ages, you know, with the church or with religion. And God is not concerned with religion. He is concerned with relationship. And that's what's the beautiful thing about the Bible is understanding that it's like nothing we could do, you know, whether we tried hard or we worked our way or we, you know, read the Bible or prayed, nothing we could do could earn our way, you know, to his favor. So again, there was a big dilemma there and he desired that relationship with us. And again, that's the whole story of the cross and of Jesus. It was literally that basically someone perfect and eternal is the only one that could actually atone for us in order to kind of reconcile that relationship. Because if you think of God being eternal, and you think of, you know, you hear about heaven and hell and eternal. and But again, the only person that could literally pay the price or would be someone that is eternal. And that's what's extraordinary about the story, you know, and the gospel, you know, of Jesus is the fact that he had to come and he had to eternally suffer in a way for us. And I mean, some people look at it and they say, that's horrific. You know, why would God do that? You know, if God could have done it any other way, he would have done it. But the interesting thing is God cannot contradict himself. He can't just excuse sinners. Like a lot of people will say it's like a judge. If you stand before a judge and you say, you know, I murdered five people, but you know what? I'm really trying. I'm I'm doing this and I'm walking, you know, ladies across the street. And he's like, that's wonderful. You know, you're doing nice things, but I have to punish you. I have to, you know, someone has to pay the price. So I've always used that analogy because people really don't understand. But if you're in court and you're about to go to prison for the rest of your life and someone stands up and says, I'm going to go to prison for that person. How would you respond to that person? You know, when you're out and all of a sudden that person's in prison and they're going to serve the rest of their life in prison, how would you feel about that person? Because that's kind of the story of Jesus, right? And a lot of people will look at and, you know, research it. And But I think C.S. Lewis, and he was a great theologian of our time, he said either Jesus is a lunatic, he's a liar, or he's Lord. You read the claims of Jesus and either he's out of his mind He's the world's biggest liar because he claimed crazy things like, I'll forgive your sins. I am God manifested in the flesh. So the three choices you have, you can't say that Jesus is just a prophet or he's a good teacher because he talked crazy. Either he's a lunatic, he's a liar, or he's Lord. And the thing is, if he is truly the son of God, if he truly is who he said he is, you know, in John 14, 6, uh, at the end of all my videos, I end with, uh, you know, celebrate truth, John 14, 6. But again, it's, I am the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus didn't just say, hey, this is truth. He said, I am the embodiment of truth. Like I am, I am fully truth. So in all of this, you know, truth seeking and wanting to know truth, I think it's important for everyone to at least look into it, read the words of Jesus and come to your conclusion. If you think he's, you know, a lunatic, okay, you looked into it, that's your opinion. If you think he's a liar, that's your choice. But if you actually believe he is the son of God, you know, that he was crucified, that he rose. Um, and this is literally true. Everything he says, you know, it definitely will change your life. So Jesus or God or together, they are awakening us to flat earth in your opinion, so that when the grand deception comes, we can be armed with information and be able to resist it. Is that a summation of what you said there? I think so. I mean, throughout the ages, there's been certain things that have been revealed. And I mean, uh, there's a great Bible verse that says that everything hidden will be revealed. So it doesn't matter in this uh, earth, whatever is kept secret, whether it's secret societies or whatever, they'll all be exposed. God says they will have their time, um, but everything will be exposed. So, you know, one by one in the, you know, the truth community, whether it was 9-11, and I think for a lot of people, 9-11 was the big one. You know, for me, I really, really sprung into it, you know, after, uh, you know, I forget which one it was, but uh, there was a documentary from 9-11. And after that, you know, once you get open to how evil and corrupt this world is, and then when you start studying the people that run this world or the top elite, what I was fascinated with is like, I want to study their spirituality. Who do they serve? And they serve, I mean, whether you believe in the devil or not, these guys do. 
and they're the most you know they're the the most powerful they're the richest and they literally serve lucifer so you know if you're an atheist or you're someone that you know is on the fence you got to go well that's interesting you know that they're really you know they're believers and they you know if you look around at what they think about jesus or the bible they hate him with a passion i mean if you look at media and you look at all around the world i mean I mean, there's no other name that's used as a cuss word more than Jesus Christ. And what I found interesting is when people are upset, how come no one's saying devil damn it or, you know, you know, Satan damn it. It's, you know, they use God's name in vain. And I'm like, well, let's just say there is a creator and let's say God. Why in the world of all people, you know, why not someone you really hate, <laughs> you know, throw them into there. But people literally say it. So I used to look at it like, okay that it's bad, you know, you're blaspheming, you know, that's not good, you know, you should be careful. Or you can look at it another way. No matter how much you try to run away from the fact that there's a creator or there's God, he's on your lips literally every day. Hmm. You know, so it's just an interesting, interesting way of looking at it. Yeah. Um, do you think that Obama, for example, serves Satan? Uh, I've seen some videos that you've posted and other videos other people have posted that say that he is not indeed what he what he portrays. I mean, supposedly he goes to church and that sort of thing. Um, do you think that, yeah, uh, bottom line, do you think he serves Satan? Well, I mean, I mean, the Bible literally says whoever is not for me, and this is Jesus talking, but he says whoever is not for me is against me. There's no, you know, in between. So even a person that basically chooses like, well, I'm not really going to, you know, accept him as the son of God, or I'm not going to worship him or, you know, put him as king of life. You know, it literally says that they're against him. I wouldn't go so far as to say that, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if Obama, you know, serves Satan, but what I do know is he's a puppet. He's been set up. He's been told what to do. Obama can't even talk without a teleprompter. And any agenda they want pushed, they will push. I mean, it was a brilliant strategy and it was unbelievable too, because, you know, anytime you had any problem with Obama, you were instantly labeled a racist. It was like, oh, you know, it was like, oh, you're a racist. So they kind of put him in a place that he could say something. And, and the minute you had a problem with them, if you were of another color, you were just racist. They just shut you down with, with that. But again, I think it's that whole dichotomy, the whole, you know, right and left or the Republican Democrat. Again, this is like, you know, wrestling. You know, these guys go out and they beat the crap out of each other, but afterwards they go out for a beer with one another. They're laughing. It's a show. It's this, you know, we, we, we like, um, for example, I was a big uh, fan of Ron Paul. And I think a lot of people got wakened up to how corrupt uh, the media was when literally he was winning polls. He was winning, you know, states, and yet they wouldn't even mention his name. I mean, they'd show pictures on the screen, like the debate coming up, you know, and it's like they'd use a picture from last year's debate instead of putting him, you know. So, again, if they don't want someone to win, I don't think it's possible. I, I say that presidents are selected. They're not elected. So, again, it, it's whatever the handlers want. If they think this is a good idea, whether it's the Bilderbergs or, you know, and this is getting into, you know, all like the Illuminati and the bloodlines. But, again, when you're getting into what they decide for, you know, and whether it's Russia or US, this whole thing's an illusion. You know, we have the appearance that, oh, you know, Russia's the enemy and China and, you know, every, again, it's just this big game that they're playing. Uh, and most people, unfortunately, are deceived by it. And in the end, we may have war with Russia or China, but it's completely mm -hmm. manufactured, yep. not because right. they tell us. It's, it's amazing the lies it, that you just keep digging and then there's another one. And you wonder what is true. And in your opinion, really, what's true is Jesus and God and then everything else. Eh, you know, <laughs> you better look a little closely at it. What is the best thing a person can do, in your opinion, uh, flat earther or somebody who just happens to have stumbled upon this channel and they're not a flat earther, uh, to have a, the relationship that you said earlier that nobody comes to God but through Jesus? How do you develop a relationship with Jesus? Especially if you're new to, to flat earth and you really weren't involved in any religion before. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think it, it's it's very, very simple. I mean, I think the gospel is simple in the sense of like looking into Jesus. You'll hear a lot of things about, well, the Bible is this or, you know, God's that in the Old Testament. But it's really interesting. You do not hear too many people looking into the words of Jesus and saying, I really hate that about Jesus. It's really tough. And if you look at it, he's probably the only person ever that died without a charge. Like he literally was executed and they could not find fault with them. They could, like, it wasn't like, we found fault with you and here, 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 and that's why we got to execute you. 
they couldn't find anything wrong with them, and yet they still killed them. That never happens. You know, they will they will charge them. You know, with blasphemy and that type of thing. But again, n there was no charge laid towards him. So I would say, like, it's important to you know look into it. I mean, you hear a lot of things, and you can research a lot of things. But really, God's out there, and again, it makes sense. For us to be all relational, doesn't it make sense that God would be relational? Why would God, or the creator, create us to be something that he's not even more of? So if we're really relational, we desire relationship and communication. We love talking, you know, being around. Um, why would he want to talk? And people say, well, you know, I've never heard God talk in my ear and all that. But what if God chose to t communicate through us through his word, which what that's what the Bible says. He says, I will preserve it, you know, throughout time. And reading the Bible, that's a way that literally that God can talk to you. If you actually pray before it and say, God, you're real. If you're real, you know, please communicate to me. Talk to me. You know, show me something that I normally would not see. You know, give me new eyes, give me new ears. So I think that's the biggest thing because, uh, you know, God does not let down anyone that honestly seeks truth and seeks him. I mean, literally says in the Bible, true worshipers will seek me or sorry, true worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. And I used to tell people all the time, you know, you can believe in a lot of things. I mean, I can believe that I can fly. And then we're going to go downtown, you know, Edmonton. I'm going to go on the tallest uh, high rise. And hey, everyone, I can fly. What's going to happen? I'm going to jump. I'm going to hit the ground, right? So it's not important what you believe. What's important is the truth. And that's what's a wonderful thing about the Flat Earth Movement or even the Truther Movement is the desire. I want to know truth. And even if it takes 10, 15, 20 years, I mean, how long, you know, we're going to be researching this and trying to understand it. But spiritually speaking, does it not make sense that there has to be a truth? You can't just be like, well, whatever is true is true for me. We can literally then say, well, if someone believes it's a ball, it's a ball for them. But for us, it's flat. It doesn't work that way. And it doesn't work in the spiritual realm. It's very clear that there is, you know, an order. There's a reality. And there is a spiritual reality. And to me, it just makes sense if you look around. Jesus is very intriguing because every world religion talk about him. They bring him in somehow. Oh, he's a prophet. Oh, he's a teacher. Oh, he's a... But again, where the difference is, is, but I don't believe he's the son of God. I don't believe he's God manifested in flesh. And that's fine. They've chosen to have their opinion on him. But don't you find it interesting that it's like they all bring him in. He has to be somewhat significant. But what do we do? There's people in other countries who don't have Jesus as as much as we do here in the West uh, as part of their culture, like Muslims, for example. And you say that he's brought in, but yet it's not the religion that, that the people are brought up with or the spirituality that people are brought up with. So does that mean those people, because they aren't forging a relationship with Jesus, are basically condemned and have no hope, no chance? Well, I that mean, doesn't I'm seem good... like God would be that way, that only these people that live in this area, those are the ones. Well, again, it comes down it comes down to whether you believe inherently that we're all really good people. I mean, the Bible actually presents it as we're actually sinful. It's like, you know, if you talk to someone and say, you know, let's go by the Ten Commandments, and they're saying, you know, have you ever, no matter how small or what age, have you ever told a lie? And if someone says, well, yeah, I've told a lie, well, what does that make you? Well, a liar. You know, have you stolen anything ever in your life, even as a kid, candy, whatever? If you steal something, what does that make you? It makes you a thief, right? But I'm saying if God was to judge people by his standard, and again, he cannot contradict himself. So if he's going to judge someone and saying, are you going to be innocent or guilty? So if you stand before God and you're like, well, you've lied, you know, you've taken my name in vain, you've done this, you know, it's not a matter of hell, uh, heaven and hell. It's a matter of if he was to judge you by the Ten Commandments, would you be innocent? Or would you be guilty? And most people recognizing the fact saying, well, if he was judging me by the Ten Commandments, he'd probably have to say guilty. You know, we can get into like, what does that mean and everything? But again, it's the reality of saying, wow, but God loved us so much that he basically made the way that we would literally be able to commune with him, have a relationship with him, and literally be secured for eternity. But it was by his son, Jesus. And again, you know, people look at it as barbaric and why would he, you know, let his son do that? But again, it was an act of love. And that's the thing. If you can look through it and look at it and say, no, it's not ugly and barbaric. It's actually beautiful because, you know, Jesus volunteered. You know, he didn't have to. He volunteered and said, you know, your will be done. And he did this. But again, it, it's basically the illusion that, you know, can we work our way to heaven? Can I pray enough? Can I read the Bible? Can I do enough good acts to outweigh the good and the bad? Or there's nothing I can do 
I'm just a human, but God basically did it for me. So, I, I mean, I think it's a beautiful story and it goes against, it contradicts anything that man would write. Man would not write a story that would be like that. If anything, they present themselves as good, as noble, as, you know, so to actually have, you know, the Bible present us as actually, we're actually sinful. You know, as children, you actually train your child to do good it's actually tough work they naturally go bad they naturally in the sense you know fight and argue and you know you've got to teach them to share they don't they don't share you know naturally so the fact is are we born in this world differently and then if you get into you know genesis and you get into the bible it explains there was a big problem you know adam and eve they ate the apple they chose that route and we've all kind of been born in this state but God in his loving kindness. And that's the theme of the Bible. A lot of people will say, well, if you've read the whole Bible, what's the theme? The theme is God's love for his people. And he desperately said, I want to have a relationship with you, but we got a big problem. Sin is so ugly and it's so horrible in my sight. I can't even deal with it. I have to, because I'm a good judge, I have to punish for lawbreakers. So if we break the law, you know, just like a judge, and, and a lot of people will use that analogy when it comes to just a human court name any human court you know if he's a good judge and he's going to be just if someone has broken the law and done horrible horrific things because again you know whether i kill a mosquito or i kill an animal or i kill a human they carry different consequences you know someone could kill a mosquito and it's like oh you know kill you know a cat then it's a little bit more severe kill a human so again when you actually offend you know not just your fellow person but god you know it carries a big weight so again it's one of those things looking at it from a human point of view in a court and saying, you know, judge, I, I'm good. I, I, I do these nice things. And he's like, yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. You know, and I know that you have that desire, but you've broken the law. It would be wrong for me not to punish you. You know, I have to punish you. And then someone stands up and says, whoa, whoa, whoa I'll be punished for them. You know, so to me, it's a miraculous transfer. It's actually taking all the ugliness, ugliness from us, putting it on Jesus and Jesus putting all of the purity and holiness on us. And then when God looks down, he's just like, you know what? You, how did you respond to my son? You didn't like, you know, laugh at him. You didn't mock him. You didn't swear at him. You didn't kick him. You actually embraced him. And whoever embraces my son, I will embrace them. So it, it's it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes it's really hard. And again, I don't think naturally in our mind, we can grasp this. It actually says in the Bible that everything that we read will go against, you know, the grain. So that's the spiritual thing is saying, God, show me truth, you know, from your word, speak to me. And again, that's where the supernatural comes into fact, because when God literally does Everyone knows when it happens. And I'll tell you, everything opens up, whether it's, you know, the conspiracy, the truth seeking. But in the spiritual realm, you're like, okay, I know truth. Because there's a lot of spiritual, you know, beliefs. You know, just like there's a lot of beliefs when it comes to what happened in 9-11. You know, were there planes? Were there not planes? Were there, you know, we might not ever know. But again, there is one truth, you know, whether or not we find it. But there is one official story, you know. So when it comes to the spiritual realm or when it comes to God, the creator, it makes logical sense that if he would create his prize, you know, creation, very relational, he must be massively relational. It only makes sense because it's like, you know, creating something, if you were to, you know, paint or you're an artist, you're going to put yourself into that, you know, painting or into that music or into that video. So God would put himself into his creation especially you know whether you know the animals or the humans but when it comes to us and saying i created you you know to know right and wrong and to have all these abilities if he wants to have a relationship with us why would he keep us in the dark where we're like uh, i have no idea how to have a relationship with you i mean i guess every way is the right way to go he would literally have a way to say doesn't that make sense? Here's here's the narrow road. Here's the way it is, right? So again, it comes down, I, I personally, you know, and everything that I've looked into, and trust me, I was a massive skeptic. I mean, I got into Christian apologetics where I studied all the world religions. I studied the occult. I studied, you know, whether it's UFOs or ghosts or all these sort of things because I wanted to know truth. I wanted to know what all the pieces came together and fit. And again, flat earth has been the final piece. It's like the umbrella that everything sits under. And it's like they ha it had to be constructed for all of the lies to take place. And again, it almost makes sense. If there is a good and there's a bad, 
And if bad kind of rules this earth, which I think most truthers could see, yeah, the richest and the most powerful are pretty evil dudes, right? So if that's the case, would they have an agenda to basically hide all truth? And again, we're getting right into the earth. They would definitely want to hide the true creation of the creator. You know, and again, that gets into like free will and it gets into uh, whether or not, uh, you know, for God just to step in. People say, well, why doesn't God stop the suffering? Well, man's greed is why people are starving. You know, again, we've been created in such a way that basically we're going to be able to do things. And a lot, God gets the rap all the time, whether it's a tornado or, you know, something bad happens. But ideally, he loves us. And unfortunately, there is, you know, a lot of, you know, ugliness. And it's the ugliness. I mean, I think there's there's more more money in the world or there is like, I think even in the top 1%, they could feed the earth, you know, 50,000 times over, you know, as far as the money they have. So it's man's greed that holds on to it. And would it be loving for a God to commit and force someone, you know, to do something they don't want, you know? So I think that's all part of this thing as well. It's someone that truly loves someone would, would have that understanding. But again, it would be that desire for relationship versus religion. I can't stress that enough because trust me, I'm not a huge fan of religion either, like most people. But again, unfortunately, church or organized religion has, you know, got a really smear but again, the church, as the Bible explains, is the people, is the bride of Christ, is the body. Um, so the people is what makes up the church. It's not necessarily the building. And uh, yeah, you're going to find pastors or people that are going to do horrible things. But it's funny when they actually look at that, they just turn their way. Oh, God, why does God get the bad rep? You know, again, look at Jesus. And it's if you are really attracted to what he says and who he is, then that's the key. The key is not church and the key is not all of this. It's to say, what do I believe Jesus is? Because either he is what he said he is or he's something else. You blew me away with all those things you said. You, uh, the, Everything you said, there was so much to it that's answered a lot of questions that I had. And I think many who are listening and or watching had too about Christianity, as if if you didn't know already, and, and the Bible and Jesus and God and... Uh, a question though, if a person is one of those, uh, the elites, very wealthy or a politician in power and they are uh, doing horrible things and they are allowing great suffering and in many ways causing it while giving to charity on the side so that that looks good on the surface, can they simply just say, I accept Jesus Christ and then be absolved of all the horrible things they've done? No, and I mean, I don't think anyone can just sit there and say, oh, I accept Jesus as like an out or I'm going to give Jesus a try. I think really it like in order to come to God, it's a full surrender. It's God. I've done things my way my whole life. I've chose to do this or this. God, I want to do things your way. It's a full surrender. So if that person gets to the point where they're like, I've done horrible things and it's not just repentance, which is turning, you know, 180 degrees, it's also reconciling. So for example, if someone did that, if they were, you know, going to the people that they hurt and they're, you know, making up for that, whether they stole from someone, you know, it's not, if you stole from someone, you can't just be like, oh God, forgive me for stealing. You've got to go back and give it back to them. You know, that's when you know there's true repentance and true conversion. When you literally surrender yourself and say, you know what? I've done things my whole life my way. God, I want to do things your way. I might not like it. it. It might rub me the wrong way, but God, help me. You know, it's giving that permission and saying, help me do things that pleases you. And again, is what's really incredible is literally God gives you new eyes. He gives you new ears. And the stuff that you think that you would miss, you know, because people are like, oh, if I do that, I can't drink and I can't have sex and I can't. It's funny because all of a sudden you start looking at things the other way and you go, wow, God didn't just say no for a reason. He said it because he loves me. And I'm going to find better things in life. I'm going to find, you know, again, get into all sorts of things. But when it came to family, and that's one of the big things that the devil is public enemy number one, you know, the church, the family. But the family unit has been massively, you know, attacked. Um, and again, it can be attributed through so many different things. But God was trying to put it in a protective environment. I mean, there's divorce is just rampant, you know, throughout our society and throughout the world. And I mean, of course, you know, Satan is going to try to attack and destroy everything that is good. And a lot of people will look at, you know, the rule book or the Bible and say, well, it says I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. But if all of a sudden you stop doing that and you're happier than you've ever been in your life, you know, why is that a bad thing? So, yeah, I just think that uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, 
worshiping God in spirit and in truth. I think that's the key. And especially with the truth community is saying, hey, because again, you can research, you can read, but really if you do have access to the creator or God, start talking to him. I mean, the big thing is he's like, you know, they, they don't even talk to me. I mean, he wants relationship. I mean, I, I think almost every religion would kind of teach that. But again, the Bible is very clear that he desired relationship and there was this big severing that was in place. But once he restored that, you know, talk, talk to God, you know, tell him what's going on. I mean, he already knows, obviously. But again, prayer is not for God. It's for us. It's for us to humble ourselves and actually sit there and say, you know what? I mean, like I said, you know, you have you have a child and the child says, thank you, mommy and daddy for this. Well, who did the parents thank? You know, it, it, it stops. And it's almost like to be able to give thanks, whether it's for life or whether it's for good health. I mean, any moment one of us can, you know, get ill, we could be in the hospital. And it's like these things that we just kind of take for granted. They're so precious. And it's like, why not thank? You know, even in the meantime, before you even know, why not just continually thank? Because again, in this movement, people coming to the flat earth or the understanding that there is indeed a creator. He created us. Why not thank him daily? You know, thanks for this beautiful you know, world. Thank you for my health. Thank you that my abilities, because everything has to be attributed to him if he created us. So again, it's that relational aspect. And I think that's one of the amazing things. I mean, when I, I got saved at the age of 21 and I was one of those guys that was the last person to ever become one of those Bible thumpers. I mean, when it happened, people were like, are you kidding me? I was definitely the typical drug, sex, rock and roll kind of guy. So when all of a sudden the transformation happened, you know, it was definitely very profound in my life. But again, that journey opened up so many opportunities and it was wonderful. But yet, did I doubt? Did I still want to, mm, I want to look into stuff because I want to know for sure, like the doubting Thomas. Um, and I did one by one, you looked into all of these things and one by one, they all came true. You know, whether it was the stories of the Bible that people would laugh at, um, you know, one by one, they all started to come true. And again, that was my biggest thing is I just, I surrendered myself and said, God, you know, take over. I give you my life. I'm giving you my life. I'm making you Lord. I'm making you king of my life. I'm making you number one, you know, do what you'd like to do in my life. And it's been, it's been absolutely incredible. I mean, I've been involved in prison ministry. I've worked with prisoners in prison. I mean, I've worked in like the inner city, you know, with the homeless and stuff, but the, the profound stories and getting, you know, on the ground and doing kind of what Jesus called us to do is feed the hungry and go into the prisons and, you know, go to the widows. And it's just a miraculous thing. And these are the people that usually that most of society just ignores, but it was God's grace that basically opened me up to saying, that's what's beautiful in life, you know, is, you know, that relationship and bringing, you know, him into other people and letting him get the glory. So it was a miraculous transformation in my life, but I was definitely, you know, before, before I got saved at the age of 21, I was the type of guy that used to like mock ridicule and hopefully make Christians cry. I mean, I achieved, you know, success if I got them crying, you know? So I was brutal. Like I was really bad. So I had to, when I got saved, I didn't just go, you know, God, forgive me for the awful things that I did to a lot of people in my life. One by one, the people I could find, I literally had to go to them. And it was funny because when I went to them and I confessed and I said, I'm truly sorry. They said, it's okay. We were praying for you. Oh, wow. Interesting yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, being saved, as you said, you were, uh, how did that happen to you? Uh, it's a very, very interesting story. I mean, it gets into uh, like kind of the end times. I uh, I became friends uh, with a, a gentleman and we started hanging out and I was, you know, doing the club scene and the whole nine yards and, and we started kind of getting closer and closer. And, um, you know, I'd be like, hey, come on into the bar. He's like, no, 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 I'll just wait. And he would just wait outside. And it was like, okay, uh, I'll be right out. And then we'd jump out, we'd go out, we'd hang out. And anyways, this went on for maybe a couple of months. And then one night he was like dropping me off and uh, he's like looking at the time we were talking and he's like, that's getting late. I got to go to church. And I'm like, your parents make you go to church? He's like, no, I, I want to go. I'm like, what? You want to go to church? Like it just, it threw me off. Like I was just like, are you kidding me? What, why would you want to go to church? So he starts talking a little bit, but we really got into um, kind of revelation and times. And he, and I remember in the conversation, I said, no, it's okay. I believe in God. And he's like, but believing's not enough. 
you have to have a relationship with them. And I was like, that was the first time that it kind of clued in. But the big thing was getting into, you know, the mark of the beast and getting into technology and what the, what the Bible says will happen in the end times for the world. You know, Russia and Iran will join together. They will march here. They will go against Israel and all these things that the Bible has to say about it. I was absolutely fascinated by it because, again, we're looking at, you know, the newspaper. We're looking at life events. And again, here's the Bible prophetically saying all of these things would happen. So it, per it piqued my interest. We talked. We ended up talking actually for, I don't know, five hours on it. Um, the next few nights I kind of went off. And, uh, you know, I was back in the club and nothing happened. And there was, I think about three nights later, I was like just kind of sleeping. Um, and all of a sudden about, I don't know, it was about three in the morning, I woke up. And at the time I was actually over at my parents and was in the basement. And I mean, my parents aren't super religious. They're kind of like, you know, Christmas and Easter type, you know, people like let's go to church and stuff. But anyways, I woke up about three in the morning and there was just, I can't explain it, but there was just. And all of a sudden, I was looking on the bookshelf, and there was all these VHS tapes. And there was this one uh, VHS tape called Jesus, and it was glowing, like glowing. Wow. Grabbed it. I put it in. I just, I, like a robot. I walked up to it, put in the, I put it in the VHS, you know, I, I played the movie. And at the end, it gives you kind of thing if you want to surrender your life, if you know, it just, it just, it was the one time. And I'd heard the Bible story. I'd heard stories even in Sunday school as a kid. And, but that one, it just hit me. And that, I, I basically got on my knees. I surrendered. I said, I'm giving you my whole life. Just take it, you know, do what you want with it. Change me. Anything that you, you want for my life, you know? And I just said, whatever woman you want me to marry, whatever friends you want me to have, what, like whatever direction you have for me, I'm giving it to you. And sure enough, it just from there, I mean, just everything, my life just instantly stopped where my, my circle of friends were like, what's going on? You know? And then when I decided to go off to Bible college, they're like, you know, the big rumor and the big laughter was like, oh, Robbie's becoming a priest. I'm like, I'm not becoming a priest. I'm going to like learn more and go deeper. Um, and yeah, I mean, God definitely had a lot of ministries um, in in mind for me. Like I said, I did inner city. I did youth ministry for a while. And uh, the big part of my background is marketing and advertising. So I, I worked in newspaper. I worked in web for 10 years and now I'm in radio. So Again, that's kind of my background is like the marketing and advertising, and I've stuck to, to that. But it's been a remarkable journey. And again, it just continues on, even with this massive revelation of God's creation. And for the longest time, looking into these verses, there was just something not right. It was like, yeah, but how do you explain the waters and the waters? And so what's beautiful is, you know, it's not just Christians verifying this. There's like people all over the place verifying this. So it's one thing if, like you said, you know, your brother had said, well, have you become one of those crazy Christians, right? But again, you've got so many people verifying exactly, you know, and again, it comes down to the models, you know, do you believe in dome, no dome, you know, infinite plane. But again, the beautiful thing about this movement, and I think for the next five, 10 years, we should focus on the fact that we're fighting against the spinning ball flying through space. Let's just, you know, let's establish that. Let's get to a mainstream type, you know, appeal. Because if there's infighting and there's all this stuff going on, it just, it defeats the entire thing. I mean, there's strength in numbers. And I think that's what's important. So whether we come from different beliefs or backgrounds, I think what's important is we're all fighting on the same side of saying, hey, there's been some serious deception and we can all see this. Let's, you know, let's help any which way we can, whether it's through the science, whether it's through the spiritual, through the Bible, you know, or it's through the conspiratorial, you know, piecing all, you know, like a flat earth clues, you know, piecing it together. And yeah, that is kind of strange. You can't really go to Antarctica. You can't fly over it, you know, and then going, well, piecing it all together. So that's the beautiful thing about this is you've got three major vantage points to come at. You've got the spiritual, you've got the scientific, and you've got the conspiratorial. Robbie D is my guest. It's episode 46 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, and his YouTube channel is called Celebrate Truth. And uh, I wanted to ask you about, uh, you mentioned the different models, the endless plane and the dome. A lot of people are a bit confused about the dome because that's usually what's tied in with Christianity and the firmament. Are they the same thing? Are they different? Tell us more about your views. 
Well, my views, I mean, I'm definitely along the lines of an enclosed world. I'm looking at it as more solid um, because it's not just some verses like the firmament. You've got ones where it talks about God walking on the firmament. You've got Job where it talks about it is a like molten glass. It is strong. You've got a lot. It's not just a few verses supporting the fact that, you know, there's some physicality to it. Again, you know, could it be the Van Allen radiation belts or could it be something like this? Possibly. I mean, could God walk on something that is not, you know, solid to us, but it's solid to him. I mean, who knows? But are we in an enclosed type world where everything was created for us? Absolutely. And again, it's very, very clear. Um, you know, when you look at the Bible, God's very clear on it. Sun, moon, and he also created stars. It's not like, oh, and he created planets and he created this and, and stars. So everything we see in the sky, literally, if you're going to look at the word of God, he's saying it's stars. That's it. And it's actually intriguing because, you know, I've had a couple uh, discussions with my pastor. I'm, I'm very vocal about this. And so far, you know, um, not many at my church think I'm absolutely crazy. I'm sure maybe a, a couple do. You know, it's starting to get bigger. Some people are actually starting to watch my channel. That's starting to get out there. So I'm not by any means trying to hide it. I'm being selective in exposing it. I'm, I'm gauging where someone's at and I'm approaching certain people that I know are already like, oh, you're you're kind of a conspiratorial type person. You don't believe they land on the moon. Or someone that's like, I believe the word of God, word for word. Okay, got one for you, you know? So I'm kind of doing it that way. I'm not just, you know, getting up on a pulpit and saying, hey, I believe in flat earth. Um, so that's kind of like my method. But again, sitting down, you know, with my pastor and, you know, he's like, listen, you know, I'm I'm open. You know, in all things, and he still hit me with like, well, you know, this astronaut, you know, didn't they go here and didn't they go there? But he's at least kind of looking into it. I mean, I don't know how much time he has at this point, but, you know, we've had three meetings on it and he knows where I stand. Um, but again, he's looking into it. But the one thing it came down to, because I'm looking at all these different areas just to kind of get that crack, just get that little piece where it's like, oh, you got something there. And it was stars. It was stars because the Bible's very, very clear on stars. And then you get into like Revelation where it talks about all the stars are going to fall to the earth at the end time, whenever they're literally going to fall. And it says that men hide and tremble in caves. But for one star, just one star to fall on earth, as far as the scientific you know, community, what they have told us, I mean, the moon falling on the earth would like almost destroy, you know, the earth, forget a star. I mean, these things are like billions of, you know, in the diameter, they're massive. So they have to be a lot smaller. So when I started talking about this, he's like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. And an intriguing thing, uh, a side note is, you know, God numbers the hairs on our head. It says he numbers the grains of sand on the earth, which that's an extraordinary number. I mean, to, to, to number every single grain of sand on earth. But what's interesting about stars is he says he doesn't, not only number them, he gave them each names. It's intriguing to me because anything that's living would have a name. God's very clear, you know, in the Bible. And that's the only time you see something that they each have names. Well, only, you know, living type, you know, beings would have names. Animals have names. We have names, right? I mean, the uh, sand um, on earth, you know, obviously it's not living in the sense of like, you know, but again, it's just a very intriguing study. So I think this has opened up where we kind of forget everything that we've been taught. And I think a lot of people are exploring, you know, different opportunities. I know that some people are going to get upset and saying, well, you shouldn't bring the Bible into it or no, you shouldn't be teaching some dumb dome theory or whatever. But I think that this is going to take a while. And I think it's important for us to work on all the foundation. A lot of people say, oh, I wish it goes mainstream tomorrow. The question is, would be, would be would we be ready for mainstream tomorrow? If it actually blew up, like, I mean, everyone coming at us all at once, it's almost like taking this time and going, wow, we've got something here. Let's build the foundation. Let's, let's secure this model. Let the spiritual people kind of work on this angle, you know, because again, you know, you can look at it and saying, well, those Christians and uh, whatever. But again, do you know what would happen if even just the church in droves woke up to this truth? It would be massive numbers. And then the reality of so many other people coming to that reality, it's only going to further you know, the truth getting out to the mainstream. So everyone working collectively together, I think it's very, very important at this stage and building the foundation. So we've got all bases covered. Do we have, you know, eclipses fully covered? Do we have, you know, I mean, people are still trying to figure out the movement of the sun. 
Is it a figure eight? Is it go in? Does it go out? Um, so until we have a long time, I mean, these guys have had like thousands of years or 500 years, you know, with the Copernican theory, but they've had a long time to find all the missing holes. And, you know, okay, that's why, because, you know, that's 8 trillion miles away instead of 3 trillion miles. I mean, they keep moving stuff further and further away, like evolution, you know, everything becomes more, well, we were off by a few million years. Oh, we were off by a few billion years, you know? You know, in a couple of years, they'll basically say, oh, well, the sun, no, we were wrong. It's actually, you know, 180 trillion miles away. So with the Canon uh, Coolpix uh, P900 camera, mm -hmm. people have taken uh, pictures of stars and I've got my star necklace on today. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've seen it as looking to me like a ball of energy that's moving around really rather quickly. And uh, it, it, nothing like we've been told, nothing like science has told us. And even when you look at things like Saturn and the rings uh, with that camera, it, it looks nothing like what we've been told those things look like through NASA. Some people have said that the stars, and I'm going to include the quote unquote planets in with that, uh, are sentient bodies. If so, how does that fit into Christianity? Um, well, again, I think there's definitely a lot of validity um, to that as far as, I mean, the Bible, you know, describes them as living stones of fire. Um, when you get into extra biblical text, um, it literally talks about them as the luminaries. And it goes so far as to say that uh, they have a prescribed order that God keeps them in uh, and that the planets, uh, the seven wandering stars, chose to go do their own thing and go opposite and it actually says that they will literally be punished in the end like there's a consequence for doing that but it says that they actually started going off on their own direction doing their own thing but could they be you know living could they be angelic absolutely i mean i again just because we look in the sky i mean it's it's a big leap going from what we were taught to wow those could be you know living beings or some sort of living entity um i think there's a lot i mean one of the big verses for me is he named every one of them why would you name something why would you just number them if they were just things you know just sitting in the sky oh there's you know 18 trillion of them but when you give each one a name and the bible says that every star differs in glory everyone i mean for guys to sit down you know in the bible and to write the bible and to know what we're seeing now with a cool picks p900 that we're seeing these stars, the different color emissions, we're seeing different, you know, frequencies, we're seeing different morphing, you know, it's like every snowflake is different. I mean, that to me is absolutely profound. How can there not be an intelligent design? You know, you get into the increase of the, the eyeball, or you just get into the human body about how complex it is. But again, when we're looking in the sky, that intelligent design would exist everywhere, whether it's in our body or we're looking upwards. Um, so again, I, I've done a bit of study on it. I'm not like 100%. Where I stand on it, all I do know, though, is we've been severely lied to about everything that we see in the sky. Uh, and that I am a big believer that there is no planets, is what we've been told, you know, spinning balls that we can, you know, land on. Uh, the Bible is very clear that God created lights in the sky, period. Lights. Now, let's just take it a step further. If they're living, do you think we can land on living things? Don't you think they'd be ticked off? Like, hey, you know, get off me. Like, what are you doing? You know, like, I don't know, like, you know, any living thing that just, I mean, whether it's a, a dog walking around and he gets a flea, you know, it's an annoyance, you know, get off. You know, so again, the whole idea that we could just land on these lights that God put up in the sky, you know, it seems very, very silly the more you look into it um, as, you know, being what they are. So you could take it from a living standpoint. But even if it weren't living, if they were just lights in the sky, did God create them so that we could just start playing golf and drive around on a lunar, you know, rover, you know, drive around on these things? You know, I don't think so. Again, I, I personally do not think that we will ever get high enough that we can actually grasp how big and how amazing this earth is. I think God created it in such a way that in all of our technology and in all of our advances, we'll never be able to get high enough in the enclosed world that we'll be able to map the whole thing. I mean, Job actually says, I mean, who can measure the earth? You know, as a rhetorical question, the sense is like, you know, can anyone do that? No, you can't. I'm God. Like, can anyone can anyone talk about the pillars that the earth stands on? So these type of questions, God's basically saying, nobody, none of you will ever know truly what's underneath. You just won't. You know, you'll never truly know, you know, exactly what you're on. You'll get close, and I think we'll get close. But over time, just like people have changed their opinion, I think that God is so big and he's so beyond our comprehension that I'm sure he would want to keep some stuff for awe. Like, you know, like little children when they're just seeing things for the, the, the first time. Wow, you know, amazing. I think it's a beautiful thing that it's actually doing that to, our, to us adults. 
we're actually now looking up at the sky like little kids, like twinkle, twinkle, little star. You know, I wonder what you are. It's like, whoa, you know, but but there's that beautiful thing about that. And it's like, you know, people have described it before as like a very happy community. This is a happy conspiracy. All the other conspiracies are like, oh, you know, ugly. And this one's so beautiful. It's just like we're exploring, we're learning. And, you know, can we do this in a year? Can we do this in two years? No. You know, it's going to be us, our kids, our kids' kids. I mean, however long we have. But again, this is this is something that is opened up. And from every angle, we're going to be exploring it. But are we going to map everything out in a year's time? No. And again, all these things have stages. And everyone says that 2015 is the year of flat earth. And, you know, for the first year, for the second year, what's going to happen? For the third year, I'm not sure. I'm not God. But all I know is that this is a significant year to do what it's going to do. And we haven't even seen the end of this at all. Again, this is not the end. This is a means to the end on how significant the discoveries and the awakening will be. Orlando Ferguson map. Um, you've got the AE map. People are getting quite... Uh, confused or and, and and some fighting going on kind of like the endless plane versus the dome about which map is right and i'd say they're none of them are right we don't really have an ability like you were saying to get up high enough to see what's right we can do the best that we can and i guess we do need a map like you've got behind you uh, or like the ae map clocks i have we do need something to be able to show people what we've learned so far but the arguing about which map is right um, i think that's that's not a good thing but the the dome in the firmament of course that co creates a lot of arguing too as we had mentioned could you define biblically what the firmament means does it have sides or is it just something over the top a tent a tent to me implies sides um, of course we don't know but from a biblical perspective what do you think robbie well, I mean, I definitely think that it's like an enclosure in the sense that can we get out of, outside the firmament? No, we can't. Everything has been created inside the firmament, whether it's the sun, the moon, and the stars. Everything has been created in this. I mean, even time itself is created inside our environment. Outside of the enclosure, the dome, I mean, like I said, God created time. So God himself is outside of time. He sees time as linear in the sense that he can see the beginning, the end, and the middle all happen happening simultaneously because if you're going to create time you can actually look at time continually so to me that's the profound thing is that it would be enclosed that time couldn't just be ever expanding you know through the universe it has to be kind of in an enclosure type system again i know some people will you know disagree i think it's important right now that we come together in the sense of saying hey we know what it's not Will we ever be able to truly know what it is? I think the mystery in it all is profound. I think that, you know, people have been looking to the Bible for thousands of years. And the amazing thing about the Bible is you can read, you know, a page and then you can read it again and totally get something brand new over and over and over. Um, so I think with this, we're going to get new understanding uh, and little by little, you know, we're going to get more revelation on this. But really, when it comes down to it, will we fully 100% know? what it is i do not believe that we will i don't believe that we've been created to the point that we can fully grasp it if that makes any sense we can grasp certain understandings but it's like it's trying to like figure out the dna you know it's trying to like fully figure it out i mean they're trying to figure out so many things um even even creating life not cloning you know creating life you know they know all the components that goes into life they know everything that will happen but they cannot replicate it you know, something happens in the womb with a woman and there's a mystery there. Will we be able to fully just create life? Will we be able to clone? Yes. Can we create life? No. So there's going to be certain limitations that we have that will be in awe. Wow, that's amazing. Like, I wonder how that fully, how we fully could do that. And there might be a quest to do that, but I don't personally think that we'll ever fully, fully know. And to me, it's not, that's not a problem. I think maps like, you know, uh, Ferguson or getting into the, you know, as a muffle, Getting into all these different maps, I think it's it's good to be like symbolic, just to get it out there and go, whoa, you know, get people thinking. But are any of them right? Probably not. Maybe, maybe one is, maybe none are. I mean, I don't know. To me, that's not important. Just like the map back here, it wasn't important that it was exactly right. It was just like, wow, that's a conversational piece. You know, we have company over and they're like, hey, what the let's tell you right so to me it was something that it was like we're going to make a profound statement and i think anyone putting up a flat earth map or you know that type of thing they're making a statement of saying everything that you believed in you know is a lie 
And I think that's kind of what wakes people up. And, and it has in my past when I, you know, talk to people even recently about, you know, what have I told you that everything's been a lie? And I think with people that are believers in Bible or be looking at, you know, God and Satan and they believe Satan is corrupt and he's, you know, got his tentacles in all of this, you know, world leaders and stuff like that. Does it make sense? I mean, he has, he's been assaulting creation and Genesis from the very beginning, you know? Every single thing. I mean, you literally can take science and take the Bible and every single one is not just a little twist. It's the exact opposite. You know, it's the exact opposite. I mean, whether it's the sun, the moon and the stars were created on the fourth day. I mean, how do you figure what was the earth doing in a heliocentric? What was it orbiting if it was by itself? You know, so it's really hard um, to bring in, you know, the Copernicus system and all that. And when people start looking into it and they're open enough to look into it, they can start seeing that. And I think that's the beautiful thing is just to know wow, you know, the word of God, and this is for like Christians or people that believe in the authority of the Bible, they could be like, wow, it was right all along. But I think for a long time, we were almost embarrassed. You know, there was a time when it was like, oh yeah, evolution, God used evolution. Yeah, okay, he created us as monkeys. Uh, but when people started coming out with scientific facts and concrete evidence, the apologetics, you could be confident again saying, no, he didn't use evolution, right? He created us, like the Bible says. So I think flat earth is going to do that with, with the church. I think with religions, um, you know, Mark Sargent says it, uh, you know, in Flat Earth Clues, where he says they kind of shelved it. They put it on the shelf. They just said, let's just put this in. God used evolution. God used the Big Bang. So while they took out the evolution and said, no, he didn't use evolution at all. That's, you know, and again, having children running around, you, you tell a child that they're an animal, and then you're, you're kind of surprised that they're acting like animals, you know, the self-esteem issues that people are going through. So it's done a massive, massive psychological damage to so many people when they've been pounded with this idea that you're an accident, you're not significant, you really are going to die and just go in the ground. You're just a monkey. Uh, you're just, you know, and it's like, where's the self-esteem? Where's the dignity in that, right? So I think all of these things play a big, big picture. Um, and, you know, everyone working together, uh, I think is a huge thing. And uh, especially with the community. And I know that there's kind of a, not a divide, but it's like, well, the Christians are over here and this. But again, that's always existed. But the one thing that we can do for this movement is support one another in saying, hey, but let's push this out. Because whether they come to the Bible or whether they come to this over here, at least their their eyes are being open and they're not being deceived anymore. I think that's one of our big things is we don't want to see our family members deceived. We don't want to see them, you know, fall for the lies. And I mean, it's one thing falling for 9-11. It doesn't really affect, you know, the average person. But when you have stuff that affects the core of their identity, of who they are, these are huge things that you don't want someone to be, you know, shadowed in. And I think it's an important thing that we continue on with that uh, pursuit. You've got a baby daughter and she's going to be reaching an age where she, if she goes to a regular school, she'll have the globe and all of the lies taught to her. How are you and your wife planning on fighting that and teaching her truth? Well, it's a pretty simple one. I, I've definitely talked over with my wife. This was even before Flat Earth. Um, but uh, my wife is, uh, you know, going to be stay-at-home mom. I'm going to be out, be the breadwinner. So we're, you know, traditional in that sense. Um, and, and that's kind of her number one calling that she definitely wants to do. So she comes from a homeschooling background. So she definitely wants to homeschool. Um, and that's one thing. I've been getting a lot of messages. And we're already talking about, well, it's great. There's wonderful curriculum up there that totally talk about the evolutionary lie. But unfortunately, all the curriculum that's out there, um, you know, Christian curriculum or creation versus evolution, of course, they still teach, you know, the Copernicus heliocentric model planets, the whole nine yards. So we're already looking at, you know, possibly, um, you know, putting something together, working with some other people. Because again, we've had even people from church, they're kind of like, well, what do we do right now for homeschooling? We're homeschooling. We're getting into this portion of it and we're seeing all these planets, you know, so what do we do? And I mean, I basically said at this point, I'm not like advising anyone what to do, but I'm saying, if anything, just have them question, you know, have them question. Does that make any sense? This is what they're saying. Does it make any sense? Let's see what the Bible has to say. So, you know, I don't think you need to know everything all at once, but do you need to teach something that is proven false? And that's the thing with this is we're finding over and over and over again, you know, uh, whether it's diameters or distances or just one by one, they're all lies. So why are we going to indoctrinate? I mean, we're definitely, we're not going to have a globe. I mean, the only globe that we're going to have at our house is to do a presentation where we do it and then we chuck it. You know, like that's pretty much the only reason we would have a globe in our house. Um, but again, indoctrinating, having it in every classroom, 
um, I think it, it's it's brilliant in the sense because you don't even have to wage war. You don't even have to try to fully indoctrinate because it just is what it is. No one questions it. I mean, my I didn't. No one does. They're just like, it, it's reality. That's exactly what it is because you saw this spinning ball and you're like, oh, look at, there's Africa, there's, you know, Canada or there's the United States. Um, so, yeah, to me, it, it, it's an important thing. And I think there's going to be a huge, huge uh, resurgence of people creating curriculum for children. What do we teach our children? So that to me, I mean, as a Christian, uh, as a born again Christian, also as, you know, a creationist, that it was easy from, you know, evolution on. But now with the Big Bang, you know, teaching the planets, I mean, we're not going to be teaching that. But we're also going to equip our daughter to know how absurd it is. And if she runs into people that are like, oh, what are you talking about? She can literally, you know, give them a question or ask for an answer and they'll be dumbfounded. You know, I've, I've run into people before where, you know, they want to start talking evolution. And then if you even know a few things about evolution and you say it, they'll just back off because they don't. They just think you're an idiot if you don't believe in it. The same thing with flat earth. But I think flat earth is more profound because I mean, I would say the majority of people that first heard of Flat Earth, wherever you heard of it, YouTube, someone you heard on a TV show, you thought it was ridiculous. So I don't know, and I'm not saying that we should change it, but again, I don't know what term you use or what heading you use, but Flat Earth probably, even though I'll say it proudly, it's probably almost one of the worst because it's like, uh, you know, you're going against the grain of something that's so ridiculous. It is just so crazy. You have to be a moron to believe this. So, you know, like if you say enclosed world or if you say, you know, uh, not, a, not a sphere, you know, whatever um, ideology. Um, but again, we're, we're definitely going up against something. But if people are open and they're interested and they start researching it, it will start opening their, their eyes and they'll be like, there's something here. You know, this is not idiotic anymore. I'm having a hard time refuting this. There's been a lot of people like um, um, controversy, which I'm doing the show with. I mean, he literally went out to disprove it. He's like, I'm taking this thing down. This is ridiculous. This is nonsense. I'm taking it down. So, you know, a lot of people, I think, uh, you know, any press is good press. Even if we get some massive exposure where they're just laughing and giggling and ridiculing it, there'll be a pile of people who'll be like, hmm, I'm going to go check that out. Yeah, exactly. Flat Earth, what's that? Hmm. And then before you know it, they're, they're another Flat Earther. Uh, let's talk about your relationship with Controversy 7 and how you two met and the new project that you have together and uh, what, what you have in store for us. Sure. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a wonderful story. And it is definitely because of you, Patricia. Um, you know, you've been very encouraging, you know, right from the beginning. I mean, I've been following your shows right from the beginning. And the beautiful thing was no matter at what stage a person was at, you were always supporting someone. If they were just coming to Flat Earth, if they had, you know, two subscribers or if they had two, you know, million subscribers, you were like, hey, let's get the word out. Let's support them. Um, and uh, there was a video that you had shared. Um, someone that just basically put out their first flat earth video and said, you know, this is why I went flat. Um, and, uh, I took a peek at it and I was looking at it and I was like, wow, this guy's been, he's got like over 20,000 subscribers. You know, he's been on YouTube for, you know, six years. And I was looking through some of the videos while I was listening, um, you know, to what he had to say. And I'm like, wow, this, this is, I mean, I subscribed to him even if he wasn't talking to flat earth cause it really aligned. Um, so all of a sudden I'm kind of looking in the description and, and, Almost every video he actually puts up his email and he puts his phone number, but I actually didn't see it in the video. I was looking, I usually will read a description. Um, and it sure said, contact me, here's the email, phone number. And I looked at the phone number and I'm like, it looked like my old phone number. It was so close. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This guy is like literally like, you know, within the area. Um, so I was really excited because I just couldn't believe it. Um, so I just gave him a call and uh, answered the phone and I'm like, I'm like, uh, where are you? And he's like, Canada. I'm like, I know Canada. We're in Canada. <laughs> so he told me, and I'm like, this is crazy. Like, I'm in Edmonton as well. So we got talking, and he kind of told me just quickly on his journey for the last four weeks, trying to refute it, just coming to it. I had been into it probably for about four months prior to him. Um, and I thought it was exciting. I said, we have to meet up. Um, so we scheduled an appointment uh, at some, I think it was about a week and a half later. We met up, then we met up again. Uh, and yeah, we just hit it off. I mean, we were uh, we were aligned with uh, with our humor and just with our investigation and what we were looking at. And we just talked for hours and hours and hours and just everything. You know, like you get talked to someone and you're just like one thing after another stars. And then you're over into like the water and then you're over to, you know, you're just going a million miles an hour. 
and uh, yeah, it was really exciting. So I'm like, yeah, we gotta, we gotta, you know, I've been, I've been uh, putting something together, been working on a show idea. I'd love for you to, you know, let's join forces. I think it'd be just huge. It just makes sense. Right. And the fact is he had a really, really big studio, you know, set up as well too. So when I went and saw his set up and we have some really creative ideas of stuff we're going to do in that big environment with green screen, um, that I think will be pretty humorous and people will enjoy. So, yeah. So we just got into like recording and I'll tell you, even the first one, when we did the intro, how we kind of, you know, met and everything like that, uh, you know, there was no rehearsing there was nothing it was like flip on the camera let's just go and you know uh it was it was really well done and then uh since we've been you know recording and, and putting ideas together for the most part i mean we can literally like record uh, until the camera shuts off because the memory's full <laughs> so we've got lots of material and uh, the idea that i wanted is to make sure because the idea for this show at beginning started off like well we're going to do like a live show I still have plans uh, for celebrate uh, celebrate truth live to happen in the new year, but this show, Controversial Truth, with uh, controversy and I, uh, is going to be more like a season. So we're going to have you know ten to twelve episodes that we're going to do be pre-taped so that we can take advantage of the green screen and just some other creative things that we have an I, you know an idea of. Um, and again, that was the thing. I mean, we're going to be serious. Yet we're going to be, you know, fun and humorous and goofy. Like, again, that's the fun thing about this is, you know, when you start getting into some of these theories or watching NASA clips, I mean, you have to start laughing. It's ridiculous, right? So for us not to add humor or laugh about these things, you know, would be wrong. I mean, that's our personality. So, you know, hopefully people will enjoy, they'll subscribe. I mean, we will be launching it in the new year. We haven't come down to a concrete date, uh, but we're getting very, very closer. And uh, we were going to, you know, have uh, some videos, you know, leading up to it, but it's not very long away. That's for sure. So, so it's going to be its own channel and then you will have your channel celebrate truth and he'll still have controversy seven channel so there'll really be three channels out, out of this no no we're, we'll definitely have both our channels because he's still going to be putting up his videos i'll be putting up my videos but all the shows will be put on to celebrate truth uh for now that's what we're, we're going to be doing yeah okay so got we'll, it we'll have it there yeah interesting okay wonderful mm -hmm. well the 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 things i've seen you do together are so combination of funny warm insightful and you both are super likable and you feel like i'm watching and smiling and that's just such a great feeling because i mean we're the whole flat earth thing is a quite a happy thing but since there is so much infighting and all of that there can be this draggy depressing feeling sometimes and there are some videos that are you know accusatory people are doing hater videos against people and to see that that uh, that love that you guys obviously have for each other it's it's a uh, you you catch it you feel it and you watch it and you just walk away thinking there is hope things are going to be okay so thank you both for coming together and doing that really for all of us Oh, and we're, we're really excited to do it. I mean, we really want to, you know, obviously reach different different people with the show. But again, we want to have it in a way that's creative and it's fun. And I mean, like um, Matrix Decode and Wiki Wiki, as far as uh, the Rebel Outpost, I mean, that's creative. It's exciting. It's fun. I mean, they do a very, very uh, interesting you know they put skits together they do a great job you know and uh, been in discussion with uh, with both of them as far as what they're doing with the show we're going to do something a little different i mean there's more you know uh ours is you know more kind of talk showish and we've got different elements of it but that's the beautiful thing is anybody you know can come into this and whatever your gifts or talents are you know come out i think for the most part the majority of us we see and we want to encourage other people because again, we're tapping into different markets, right? And again, for us, I mean, we're really, you know, we really want to tap in to the church. I mean, we want to talk to, you know, not even just with the show, but personally, we want to see a resurgence with the church. We think there'll be a huge awakening because then when they realize that it's not just them that believe this, I mean, there's thousands of other people, you know, it's an exciting thing. I mean, you, you definitely, there's strength in numbers, but the confidence is important. And as as we you know give tools and we allow you know to equip uh, people I think it's very very important and it will help people because they'll just see these arguments and they'll relay them or they'll tell their friends or hey check this out and there's just many ways to reach different types of people and that's kind of what we're hoping to do well aside from a link to your channel I will put controversy sevens in fact I think I already have in the description box in this particular video so I, I encourage anyone who's not yet subscribed to uh, to his as well please do really excellent excellent channels and a lot of fun and then your joint efforts gonna be amazing I can already tell thank you for taking your time and coming on and talking with me today
Well, thank you for having me. It was uh, definitely a, a real pleasure. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Like I said, I think you're doing wonderful work. I know that there's a lot of uh, people out there that, uh, you know, want to accuse you of all sorts of things. But right from the start, you know, being genuine, you have your questions. You're not, you know, there's no agenda here. You're just taking it all in. And I think that's really important. I think that's important for anyone, you know, listening to this show or even considering this is take all of these things, you know, use your brain, you know, start, you know, looking into it. But the fact of starting to attack other people, people so early on it just you know it doesn't make sense because people will say well no one's going to take you serious if you bring the bible into it well i beg to differ if i go into like churches and i bring the bible into it a lot of people are going to take it seriously so it might not be serious to someone that's very scientific and all they want to know is science okay i might not bring the bible into it there but again understand that there's certain people out there that they will respond different ways so i've heard the arguments and i know that you know as this continues on i see it intensifying actually i see it getting worse and the best thing that we all can do is really just let it bounce off us don't take it personally because anyone in this position, once you put yourself in a, uh, you know, in the limelight or you put yourself out there, I mean, you can't please everyone, even in the best of times, you know, there's no one there that everyone likes. I mean, there'll always be someone that, you know, doesn't like you. So when you understand that it's just a reality, I mean, how many people, you know, actors in Hollywood, I mean, they have tons and tons of fans, but then they also have a fan page of people that hate them, you know, lots, you know, so it doesn't matter where you are, you're always going to have haters, you're going to have dissenters, you're going to have all these things. And, uh, you know, that's the, 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 what they want is for you to just get discouraged and quit. And, you know, they win anytime. I don't care what happens. Um, you got to, you know, Again, when it comes to this and something so big and every one of us that came to this went through that stage where, you know, you couldn't even sleep. It was so profound. You just were soaking it in. I have to watch 10,000 videos. I don't know if I can even go to work because this is too important kind of. So when you get into that and you realize how important this is and how big of a conspiracy this is as far as like does does jfk seem even close to flat earth when you know in comparison they're all important and they're all lies but again this whole entire global structure that they have put in is so massive and you know we didn't we didn't have much chance to get into you know like documentaries that i'm working on and i'll be working on some in the new year but again to me it's very important and i'm aligning with certain people that look at let's look at the big picture here let's look at okay let's look beyond why would they do this but where is this leading and we did talk about that um but to me it's this is this is massive it's really massive so for someone to get me down where i'm like okay i'm gonna quit because that person called me names you know they're gonna call me names they're gonna call me crazy i mean you, you get you get told crazy things like you've been dropped on your head or you've you know you're a moron but again the same people that are doing these they're not creating a youtube channel and putting themselves out there either right so the majority of people that are out there kind of spouting all these things off i mean they're all hiding you know doing their thing but i'll, I'll have at least respect for someone that actually you know has a big uh, voice uh has a youtube channel and decides to do that at least give them credit in the sense that okay they're putting themselves out there we can now get into you know a dialogue but a lot of these comments and stuff i mean again i mean i used to make christians cry i used to like laugh at them and their beliefs and it's nonsense you know you believe that stupid book and i'm sure if given enough time at a certain point i would have probably laughed at flat earth and if there was enough of you around i might have been the one in the comments going you guys are morons 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 so some people come to it like my wife came to it in like two seconds literally two seconds i'm like are you kidding me you don't have any questions nope it, yeah, that's the way it is. Um, and then some people, it might take two years. So I just think that it's like, you know, like Kent Hovind, we were talking about him before. It's like, what do you think? And honestly, is there hope? Yeah, of course there's hope. I mean, it could take him another three years, unfortunately. But it's like, why are we focusing on Kent Hovind? Let's focus on someone that actually comes to it. And then I, I can take the forefront. Maybe Ken Hovind is not destined to be the forefront of this movement in the creation versus evolution debate anymore. Maybe there's going to be someone that takes up that mantle and becomes the next Ken Hovind in this revelation. So to me, it's exciting. What's going to happen? Who are going to be the people that are going to be out there? But again, there's going to be so many different facets. There's going to be people from, you know, Islam or Judaism or Christianity or agnostics or, you know, spiritualism and all these different people. But the one thing I do know is I don't know how big the atheist flat earth movement will be. 
I really yeah. don't think it's going to stand very long. So that's to me is exciting. At least they're transferring over and they're coming to the knowledge of like, you know what? There is a creator. There has to be. And to me, that's encouraging. And if people have questions and they want to know more, I can explain it. I had a ton of questions, you know, at the very beginning as well too, right? So it's not about pushing, you know, beliefs on someone. It's just saying as our, as our quest for truth in the material, have the same quest for truth in the spiritual and don't just brush it off saying everything is garbage because it's all man-made. It doesn't make sense. And God would be smart enough to be able, you know, to use his creation to convey something over time to tell us about him. And I think that's a beautiful thing about the Bible is, is he loved us enough to say, here, this is who I am. This is my likes. This is my dislikes. This is, but we can know everything. Like they always say the Bible, you know, stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. I think it's kind of funny, but again, it's like, if you look at it that way and saying, if, you know, you buy a car, you know, a car comes with a manual. If life comes with a manual, what would that manual look like? And I, you know, looking into the Bible and criticizing it and, you know, investigating it, I'm like, you know what? Everything that I'm going to encounter in life is here. It's almost like, you know, a manual for life. And it makes sense that if a loving creator is going to, you know, give us the tools we need, you know, he would do it in that way. Um, it just makes sense to me, but some people it won't, and some people will be on their quest. And, you know, I've got lots of fans that, you know, are right on. I'm, I totally believe in you. And then some are like, you know what, I totally disagree with you, but I like what you do. And then there's other ones that are like, you know, you're a crazy, you know, Bible thumping nut job. Right. So again, I think we all can benefit. Like I said, when it comes to the revelation that we're not a spinning ball flying through space. And to me, that's encouraging. And I hopefully, you know, as the smart people in, uh, in this community will see that there is a lot of strength in numbers. And while I might cater towards a different audience than say someone else, collectively together, there's huge, huge amount of resources, videos, books, there's all sorts of stuff that will come from this. And we've only seen the beginning, so I'm excited. I'm excited too, and I'm really pleased that you came on today. You've uh, you've just been a, an amazing guest. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Robbie D. Celebrate Truth. Subscribe to a channel and Controversy Seven, who will be on at a future date with me. His uh, his YouTube channel will also be in the description box below. My name is Patricia Steer. Thank you for being here, and uh, we'll have more episodes of uh, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes yet to come. Nothing's going to stop us here on this plane. Keep it flat.